Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Noelina Ramos from the National Institute of Geological Sciences. And on behalf of our collaborators, I will be sharing with you this afternoon the highlights of our completed project titled Investigation and Numerical Modeling of Philippine Tsunamis Based on Historical, Geomorphological, and Geological Evidence of Past Earthquakes. The occurrence of tsunamis in the country is not uncommon as the Philippines is surrounded and caught by seismogenic faults, both offshore and onshore. As shown on this map, and as highlighted by the colored lines, our coastlines are exposed to various tsunamigenic sources where coastal communities are exposed to offshore faults associated with subduction zones, as well as intraplate structures. As cataloged by Bautista and others in 2012, there have been 41 positive tsunami events from 1589 to 2012. Of these 41 events, two are regarded uh, to have caused damaging impacts, namely the 1976 Morogov tsunami, which was generated by the Cotabato subduction zone, and the more recent 1994 Mindoro tsunami, which was generated by the Aglubang River Fault. So in this research, we aim to answer the following questions to address our knowledge gaps. First is to determine whether geological evidence of these past tsunamis are preserved in the landscape, and if so, where do we find these evidence? So essentially, this research aims to establish and document geological evidence of known and potentially prehistoric tsunamis in the country. One of the key findings of this project is the recognition and characterization of various sedimentological and stratigraphic data to understand these past occurrences of extreme wave events. As observed in Ilocos Norte, Mindoro Island, Southwest Panay, Calaguas Island Group, Eastern Samar, and Chargao Island in Eastern Mindanao, Wash over sediments, coastal boulders, and other emergent deposits such as beach rocks hold clues to past sea level changes, which may be associated with extreme wave events and or tectonic deformation produced from the faults. Apart from setting up the geological database of past tsunamis and other potential extreme wave events, we also explored the latest numerical modeling approaches to update our deterministic tsunami hazard models. Here, we utilize the latest terrain and seismological datasets to establish, establish offshore fault segments of subduction zones in the Philippines as highlighted on this map. And from these 18 uh, segments, Tsunami inundation scenarios were produced to refine tsunami characteristics such as maximum wave height and maximum wave velocity. So here, the panels show different tsunami snapshots at representative segments of the Manila Trench, the Negros Trench, and the Philippine Trench to the east. Such information on the tsunami height, velocity, and arrival time will assist agencies and other stakeholders in developing preparedness and evacuation strategies. From the results of this project, we have highlighted the importance of establishing baseline data on tsunami deposits or extreme wave events in general to understand their processes and mechanisms, especially that nearly 70% of our population is exposed to strong typhoons and tsunamis. So uh, for this project, there are two key uh, results or two um, highlights. First is that the identification and documentation of extreme wave event deposits in the geological record would provide insights on past occurrences of coastal hazards, and these are important in our assessment of future hazard scenarios. Second is that updating our tsunami inundation scenarios will aid agencies, LGUs, and other stakeholders in developing preparedness and evacuation strategies. So lastly, the transfer of knowledge and skills to national agencies will surely enhance our capacity to explore other coastal areas and increase our understanding of future coastal hazards. Uh, so before I end my presentation, I'd like to share this initiative called Coast Snap, 
which is a global citizen science project to capture changing coastlines. While this uh, particular initiative is not specifically targeted to tsunami, tsunamis or other extreme wave events, we can take part in this initiative by contributing photos of our coastal areas and allow researchers to observe coastal processes and even perhaps uh, coastal hazards. That is all for my presentation. Thank you very much.